Gospel Lighthouse Outreach this morning, a special time for the mothers. And I tell you what, I appreciate everyone that's come out this morning. Those that brought your mother, and those that are mothers or mothers-to-be, thank you for being with us this morning. It's a privilege. I'm telling you what, I know that we're in a day and time that it seems hard to raise children. I, I mean, there's a lot of things going on around in this world this day and time. You can't even seem like you send them to school and you don't know what's going to happen at the schoolhouse. But uh, thank God that we can pray a protection over them and know that God is going to protect our children while they're at school. If you'll bow your heads with me, let's, let's say a prayer real quick. Heavenly Father, thank you for the mothers to whom you have entrusted the care of every precious human life from its very beginning in the womb. Watch over mothers who are with child, strengthen her faith in your fatherly care, love for her, for her unborn baby. Give her courage in times of fear and pain, understanding in times of uncertainty and doubt, and hope in time of trouble. Grant her joy in the birth of her, cho her child. To mothers, you have given the great privilege and responsibility of being a child's first teacher and a spiritual guide. Grant that all mothers may, may worthily foster the faith of their children, following the examples of Mary, Elizabeth, and a lot of the holy women of the Bible. Help them to grow daily in your son and to the ones that depend on her. Assist all spiritual mothers, those who... They may not have children, but nevertheless, selflessly care for the children of others. And that has been a help to a lot of our women. I tell you what, to have a young person come in and take care of your kid or your children. And most of all, Lord, we beseech you to send your Holy Spirit, the comforter to all mothers who sorrow for children that have died, are ill or estranged from their families, who are in trouble or in danger of any kind, Help grieving mothers to rely on your tender mercy and fatherly love for all your children. May all mothers receive your grace abundantly in the earthly life. And may they hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And look forward to the eternal joy, your presence in the life, in this, in a life to come. And we'd ask this in the name of Jesus, and we all say, Amen. Amen. Closer up. <coughs> How many of you know mothers are special? Ooh, we, we remember our mothers. They loved us when we were unlovable. I'm telling you. <laughs> Protected us and taught us to do what's right when we want to do things we want to do in life. A mother is one who God has taught to love in pain and heartache. She has withered a lot of storms, Brother Dindy. So tell mom this morning that you love, you admire her if she's alive for her strength. And those of us whose mothers have gone on, whisper a prayer. I'll meet you in the morning by the bright riverside. You know, it's, it's wonderful to know that, Francis, I think it is, your mother's been with you all these years. And that is a blessing. That is a blessing. But a lot of us have lost our mothers and they've gone on to their reward. And we still have the memory of what we've been through in life with them and how they've raised us, Brother Cecil, and what they've done. I remember Brother Cecil's mama. I tell you, she was a precious lady, lady and loved the Lord. And boy, we'd have a wonderful women's meeting and begin to just walk around and around the altars and begin to pray when she's here. And I, I tell you what, she believed God for good things to begin to happen at Gospel Lighthouse Outreach, as we all do. And I know that God wants us to grow. He wants us to grow and be fruitful and to see our fruit remained. That's what it's about. I want to see fruit brought in 
And you know it starts, fruit starts from a seed, don't it? Don't, don't you have to plant a seed to get that seed to begin to grow? But once you see that seed begin to grow, I'll tell you what, Brother Dendy, it can become beautiful and blossom. Big green leaves, just like it says in Psalms 1, that they'll be fruitful. I'm going to start off in the garden. That's where it all kind of began, wasn't it? <laughs> and Adam said to his wife, This is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. You know how much he, let, he had when he saw her. I guess you could say he said, wow, man. <laughs> wow, man. <laughs> but it was woman. And, you know, God had brought all the animals forward for him to see them and all that. But nothing was what he needed in life. Wasn't one that he could talk to. It probably wagged its tail at him or maybe barked or, you know, mooed like cow, whatever. All these other animals that come up. But he finally, when he took a, the rib out of a man and he made the woman, wow. <laughs> he must have said, wow. And he had somebody he could talk with. Somebody to walk alongside. Now, I'm going to tell you what, he didn't take it out of the hill like they said of his foot that he could mistreat the woman and kick her around and call her names. But he took it from the side where she would be a helpmeet. That she would go with him and be with him. And you know, Psalms 31.10 said, Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh to be together. Who can find a virtuous woman? You know, a lot of times, I know when you're young and getting started out in life, Brother Dendy, it, it seems like you don't have much, you know. But if you rely on God, God gives you much where there's little. Amen. And sometimes we get to younger women and they get to looking around, why so-and-so got this much? You know, why did they get all these fancy things and I don't get any? And if you're not careful... The lust and the things of life can get you to lust and after all them things. And, and then all of a sudden, it can conceive sin. Yes. And you'll get to looking at another person or another man and think, wow, they could give me these things that my own can't. And see, that is a woman that's not looking after her own husband's will, you know, things in life to give him. But she's looking at the lustful things that's wrong in life. And I'm going to tell you what, these things will bring death. You continue in them, and some way they'll bring death. And so we've got to be careful of what we keep our eyes on. You know, uh, John 1, 1 John 2.15 says, Love not the world, neither the things of the world. Because if, if you look at the world and the lust of them, you're going to be part of that world, brother. Part of that world. And then you're going to end up with death. But keep your eye on the go. And we've got a reward coming. And Jesus is coming soon. And I tell you what, it is not going to be long when he gets here. And I'm going to go on to Genesis 3.20. And Abraham called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And though things happened in life with God's help, with God's help, it goes on. In chapter she conceives, bear Cain, a man from the Lord, such as joy, when she looks at that baby. And, and see, so she probably looked at that baby and said, wow, he, he's got his eyes. He's got my mouth. <laughs> you know, and how much love and joy there was at looking at the first child. And, and what you're going to see the first time you look at that baby and starts crying, Ooh, I'll tell you, it's a blessing. Then she bears another son. And calls his name Abel. You know, you don't think you have enough love for all these kids, but you can have 10 kids, but hearts, and there's love for each one. Amen. Maybe one gets jealous because one gets more than the other, 
They think they do, but you still love them all the same. You would miss them. You know, if they weren't in the household, you would miss them. I remember when my second child was born, <laughs> well, I'll say my second son was born, and he, skinny little thing, <laughs> and he, he was not real pretty at the time he was born. And my daughter looked at him and she says, we'll even love him even if he is ugly. <laughs> and I thought, how cute, you know, how cute. We all started laughing. But I'm going to tell you what, she wasn't embarrassed of him. I mean, she'd drag him around. But three months later, he looked like the Gerber baby. Everybody would tell me, boy, he looked just like the Gerber baby. And I thought, wow, finally he grew into it, you know. <laughs> and I know sometimes when they're first born, they don't look real pretty. Or, but you still love them. You still love them. And so after she had Abel, which we learned, Eve eventually lost Abel when Cain murdered him. And how, how tragedy happens in life. We, we have these things will happen. Death comes. And it, it doesn't matter what age or what. But death will come in life. And, but it's how we overcome. And you know, really, if you just think about it, they belong to the Lord to begin with. They were with him, and they'll go back to be with the Lord if you've trained them right. You know, the Word of God said, train up a child, Proverbs 22, 6, in the way he should go. And when he is old, he won't depart. He's not going to depart. There's going to be something in his soul that's going to keep drawing him back to the Lord until he finally gets stable in there, and he gets fruit, and he gets whew, where he really loves the Lord, and he stays in there with all he's got. And that, to me, is, is a mother that's really trained a child and sometimes yeah you could train them up the best you can but still it seems like they stray at times but thank God they come back in with your prayer you know what sister Mary it takes a lot of prayer and I know that you've had many years that you've prayed for your children and we continue to pray but the Lord's coming soon how many of you know that the Lord's coming real soon I feel it's not even going to be very far away down the line. And I'd I, I love to see the coming of the Lord, Brother Horace. I'd love to see him coming in the clouds of glory for his people because this is what he promised. He promised us, I'm coming for a, a people that's made themselves spotless and ready, you know, and to get ready, we've got to be in that word. Mothers, you've got to be in that word. You've got to show the child when you train them up, they see what you're doing and what they need to do in their life. And I'll tell you what, I remember Coy used to go around the coffee table all the time, just hitting it, and <laughs> he couldn't talk. But I knew he was a preaching. That shows me when they're in the house of God, they watch what's they taking learn. place. They, they know what's taking place. And they learn, like Brother Dindy said. So through her bitter tears, she went ahead and give. Abel back. Now, does that stop her love from loving Cain after all this? Because Cain said that, you know, it grieved him what had happened at the end. You know, he was going to be a vagabond. You know what a vagabond is? A, a wanderer. Yeah. rest of his life, he was going to be a wanderer. He was going to go in life feeling like he was unloved and undone, but an outcast. And, you know, that's hard to do because you can get around a, a group of people. And sometimes you feel like you're an outcast. You know, yeah. you feel like, why do they not want anything to do with me, Brother Keith? You know? And one time there was a mother in Elijah's day, Elisha. And she uh, conceived and she bore, bore a son in the season that Elisha told her. And it was a, it come a time of life. And when the child was grown, there fell a day when he was out with his father and those reaping out there. And he said to the father, his father, my head, my head. He began to cry. And, and how we worry about, you know, when these things happen. We don't understand what's going on with their body. And he said to the lad, care, to another lad, to carry him to his mother. See, he knew where to take the lad. Now, isn't it something that when a child gets hurt, what, go, to, go to your mama and show her, you know. Tell mama what's wrong. And uh, mamas usually know how to help and comfort a child 
when they're hurting or when they've got a headache or, or what to do with them. And so he told the lad, take him to his mother. And when he had taken him, and now this is in 2 Kings 4.20 now, and when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees until noon, and then he died. Don't know what happened. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God that would come into that room every once in a while. He'd come to the side and he would stay at their house because she had a special place for him. And she laid him on the bed. Now she knew something about this man that caused her to do this, to, to let her know, I can take him to this man of God. You know, I can bring him and lay him on the bed and something's going to, something's going to take place because I believe in my heart something is going to take place with this lad. And she called to her husband and said, send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, this is what the husband said, wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, it shall be well. Now see, she already spoke the words. It shall be well. Amen. Knowing the child was already passed away, it shall be well. Then she saddled an ass and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. Let, I'll tell you when to slow down. But right now, I want to get to that man of God. That's on my heart, and I want to get to him. So she went and came into the man of God on Mount Carmel. And it came to pass, what the man of God saw her far off, when he saw her far off, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, the Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to her, meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And she answered. And she didn't say shall. She said, it is well. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet, by Gehazi, came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord hath hid it from me and hath not told me. He didn't know the child was dead. Husband didn't know he was dead. Then she said, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? See, he had spoke before that she was going to have this child. Amen. Then he said to Gehazi, gird up thy loins and take my staff in thine hand and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not, and any salute thee. And if any salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth and as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. It's kind of sound like Elijah and Elisha, didn't it? I will not leave thee. <laughs> and he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awaked. And when Elisha was coming to the house, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went in therefore and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands and he stretched Self upon the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked to the house to and fro, and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times. And the child opened his eyes, and he called Gehazi, and said, Call the Shunammite. So he called her. And when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out. How many times we know that the power of God is great. And, and, and at times, I, I've heard of many that have rose from the dead, Brother Keith, I, and, and they've given their testimony of what's happened, you know. And then we know, too, there's some that has went on to glory. But we leave that in God's hand because he knew the future. 
See, we, if we call them back, there may have been something that happened later down the line and they lose their soul out. But thank God, we claim our children for the glory of God. I claim them that they're going to receive their reward in heaven and we're going to be all around, you know, with Jesus celebrating. Woo! Celebrating a new day, a new time. No pain, no heartache. Glory. We won't have to worry about seeing a child die from cancer or hurt or, or being beat up or what. We won't have to see this because we're going to be in a day, a day that there'll be no night. <laughs> no more night. Glory. But a time that we can love one another with Jesus. Jesus was the one that gave us that love. And you know, we, we talk about Mother's Day and that love probably started from the beginning, the first hug, when that baby could hug you. Or when you get out and that baby gets scared, what does he usually do? He usually grabs you and puts his hand on your shoulder because you're going to protect the baby. See, he, he, he knows you're going to protect him, or she knows you're going to protect her. And, and that's what it's all about is protection and love and guidance. Guiding them in the way that's true. And uh, we don't want our kids to go out playing the highway or something. So we warn them. We warn them. Just as we warn them about Jesus, you know, what he wants in your life or, you know, and what he dislikes. And sometimes you get upset and say, well, you're not going to tell me what to do or how to act or how to live. You know, Woo! we got some rebellious ones around once in a while. But to thank God we... We can pray and they can get right back in and serve God. See, thank God for His mercy, isn't it? His mercy endureth forever. And all we have to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry. I failed you. And, and just forgive me and cleanse my heart. And you know what? He's always there with open arms. I mean, He died on that cross and His arms were open. And He shed that blood so that we could have life right here and have it more abundantly. I remember one time I'm going to go back to a pastor that I had. And I'm telling you what, this pastor was on fire for God. He loved God and was so thrilled about what he was doing in the first calling in the first few years. Boy, I'm telling you what, he was so excited. And one day he was telling us, you know, I got to the place where I thought I could walk on water. <laughs> Have you got that place with God where you get so excited about God that you felt like any time you prayed for somebody... God would hear you and he'd answer that prayer or, or if somebody was sick, you know, you could pray for him and, and God would answer that prayer. And we've all been there. Well, he thought this too until he went to the lake and he got on the water and he said, and I just went. Psh. <laughs> <laughs> and that sometimes happens to us. We'll pray for somebody and it just seems like it just maybe just goes to the ceiling or hits the floor or what. Did that discourage him from wanting the pastor? No, that didn't discourage him a bit. In fact, he got back up, and boy, I mean, he was even more ready to get out there and preach the word hard in season. Woo! And I'm going to tell you what, but then another year or two went by, and his son got cancer. He was about 7 to 10 years old, and he loved that boy, and he sat with, with him at the hospital, and the thing that got him and his wife, and, and she was just a young woman, and... Uh, they were sitting there, and that boy told him, said, Dad, I'm all right. And he hit his chest, and he said, Dad, I'm, I'm all right. I'm going to be all right. I, I'm ready to go to be with Jesus. And so that thrilled the dad and mom. Did they give up preaching at that time? No, they got back in because they knew that one day they're going to see him again. And he's going to be whole. He's going to be whole, Brother Dindy. And, and, and sometimes we get destitute and down and out and think, wow, is there an end to this? You know, is there an end to this? Yes, I guarantee you there's an end to heartache and sorrow and everything that takes place around about, there's going to be an end. One day, Jesus is with all of his power. When he comes back, he's going to show the world, you were right. When you prayed with them, when you told them about heavenly things, yeah. you know, when they didn't want to listen. Sometimes we got young children. They don't want to listen to what we have to say. But when you begin to tell them about the love of God, yeah. whew, I tell you what, then one day, Sister Donna, they begin to hear. And even though they move off far away, <laughs> and we've got children that's off far away, 
they're still as close as when we can get on the phone and talk to them. Just to find out, are you doing okay? Is everything okay in your life? And uh, hopefully you, you've got Christian young ones that love the Lord with all their hearts. And uh, I know my daughter, she told me yesterday, said if it wasn't for the Lord, uh, I, you know, I don't know if I could make it this far with what I'm doing. And I said, you know what? It's the Lord that leads us. He, she said, I've been trained. And they know they have been. My young boy, uh, Dugan, I'll call him Dugan. His name Willie. And sometimes he gets off in a path that he wants to go his own way. But one day he fa uh, was in a hole digging it out and cut his head. Guess who he come running to in the house? Mama, pray for, <laughs> pray for me, pray for my head. Because he did cut it pretty deep. But isn't it good to know that they knew who to run to for prayer? Now see, they watch your life. They watch your life and they know if you're a prayer warrior and things get done when they pray. And I, I think of a man and a woman that prays together. See, we, we need to pray one for another, but we need to pray together that our prayers won't be hindered. And it's good that I can call Brother Dindy when I get sick and I can say, Honey, will you pray for me? I, I just, I feel bad. I feel sick. And he, he'll just grab the anointing oil and anoint me and begin to pray. And see, that's what you need to start setting up in your house. If you have nobody right now to stand with you and pray, Sister Donna, get that anointing on. Anoint yourself and say, Lord, touch my body. Heal it. Help me, Lord, through this, this time of trouble or heartache or whatever we go through. And you know what? Let them see around about how, how you're praying for yourself because they're going to think, what is going on here with them? <laughs> Why are they praying for themselves? But they're going to know, wow, they got well fast. Something took place and it didn't take medicine, but the hand of God reached down and began to touch and began to heal. You know, God's good to us all this morning. We have mothers and Dad's here and all, but he's good to us all. We have grandpas and grandmas. And I'm going I'm to quit with this one, but I had to tell you, Becky come home with a Mother's Day card, card from school, and it was real cute. It was a big, made like a cupcake with a little cherry on top. And then at the bottom it had some little things that had little coupons in it. And each one said to my sweet mother... But I opened it up and said, I'll give you one free hug. I'll do the dishes or whatever. And it went on into the bottom one when I lifted it up. It said, I'll take out the trash. And on it, in big letters, she put expired. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't guess I get the trash took out that day. But only her, you know, she could think of those things. Then I got a little grandson. He'll lay in bed and about the time you get him to bed, he's... I'm thirsty, Grandma. Or I'm hungry, Grandma. And I'll say, go to bed. We'll get you something in the morning because I knew he wasn't. He had plenty to eat and drink before he went to bed. But in a little while, I'd hear him again. I'm hungry. And I said, Stephen, go to sleep. I'll feed you in the morning. And a little bit later, here we go again. Grandma? And I said, what? And I hollered, What? <laughs> And he said, did you know that children can die of hunger? I think it was something like that. And he was giving me this real pitiful thought, you know, that I should feed him. And I said, Stephen, you won't believe this, but I just heard that a doctor said you've got 30 days in your intestines that you can live off of, you know. And so anyway, after that, he finally went to sleep. But, you know, children are... They're the cutest things, and they come up with the cutest. I, I remember Art Linklater saying they, they say the cutest things, and they do. They'll say things that will touch your heart and touch your life. And I know Johnny and Olivia's got the little one that comes here and sings with us, and I'm telling you what, she's a corker too. <laughs> Brother Hart's got that little one that just has to chase down all the time, but keeps him young, going, <laughs> keeps him moving. God gives us special blessings in our life. And it seems like right now it's these little ones that's coming along that bless us. And I can't wait until she has that baby in a, what, a couple more months and not long. And I, I'm sure her dad can't either. <laughs> Do what? Fifteen more weeks. Fifteen more weeks. Ooh, goes to show you she's looking forward to it. Boy, girl? Boy. A uh, boy, okay. 
Thank God. And we need to be praying for her. We need to be praying. That last month seems like it's never going to end, does it, Letha? But thank God for each one of you coming out. And I hope you enjoyed what was said. And I hope something was said to enthuse you for the day. And you have a wonderful Mother's Day. And maybe hubby will take you out or, or mom will take you out and take you to somewhere to eat and enjoy this day. I'll tell you what, you're worth it. Did you know that? You're worth it. You've, you've done a lot. I, I hear Brother saying a lot about Adriana, how much he just loves his wife and how she does for him. That, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. That's a good testimony to hear, you know, what the wife does for her husband or what the husband does for his wife, you know. It, it's a blessing. Or what the children do. Because we as older children, you know, we, we need to do for those that are round about. It's the giving. Didn't God give all that he had? He gave all that he had. And if it wasn't for what Jesus done, where would we be today? And I could sing that song, What Would I Do Without Jesus? I can't do anything without Jesus. I mean, he loved me <laughs> from the beginning when I was rebellious and undone, and I'll never forget the morning. I'll tell you what, I, don't, I can't even tell you what the preacher preached, but I know that I had to get to that altar and ask God, Whew, forgive me, Lord. I've failed you and I've sinned. And we all have, because he said we've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. But thank God there's a place that I can go, and if it's not here, and if I'm at home, it's at my bedside, wherever it is. Or I'm walking around. Sister Brown that used to come here, an older lady, and she'd tell us that best time for her was when she's washing her dishes, and she could pray. Did you know you can do that? Whatever you put your hand to, do it with all your might, begin to pray. And I'm tell you what, it makes the chore go a little easier. Uh, you hear them kids when they have to do something. I know when I was young and had to put wash dishes or something. Whew, one day I tried something that didn't work for me. I put them in the oven, Brother Keith. I put the dishes in the oven. So not thinking that Mom was going to make toast or biscuits that morning, but I put them in there. Got caught just like that. So what did I have to do? I had to get up and wash dishes. <laughs> so we get caught for our little things at time, and, and God will tell on us. <laughs> Brother Cecil, don't laugh. But anyway, God does tell on us. I love him this morning, and I thank him for all that he's done at Gospel Lighthouse Outreach. Let's continue to pray for the church, continue to pray for those around about us, and to give. Give our love. We all need a, a pat. We all need a love, you know, the love pat and a handshake and somebody to tell you they love you. It makes your day go a little better. Than, but Amen. mothers, we love you this morning. And I'm going to turn it back over to Brother Dindy. And we may have some for prayer this morning. It needs some prayer if you're not feeling good. Or, and God bless you. <laughs> go ahead. Wow. Uh -huh.